Well, gentlemen, the legislature has granted a loan of two million in scrip, though bond sales remain stagnant. I still contend a canal across the state by Hoosick Mountain is a superior plan. Rubbish. Everyone knows that raising capital in this present environment would be much harder for that appeal. The railroads will offer unimagined benefits once opened. You're both fools. Major Whistler is a highly competent individual. He'll push the line through in record time. His infernal insistence on double width grading has already added thousands to the cost. And if hostile interests buy up the undervalued Albany and West Stockbridge shares, the Western Gateway would be blocked by Albany citizens worried that injury be done to projected trade for their own metropolis. Investments would be worthless. Editor Buckingham of the Courier summed it up precisely when he declared, this proposed line will prove as useless as a railroad to the moon. spring brings the promise of a new day for the long abandoned Keystone Arch Railroad bridges of Western Mass. This is the first meeting and site visit of participants in a project that has already marked its 12th year. Some needs of the bridges are readily apparent as where the parapet wall abruptly ends. The missing stones have been sent to watery graves by vandals. Discussion turns to damage by natural forces, water and ice. The collapsing upriver wing wall is partially underwater and will present the biggest challenge for crews and regulators alike. Dewatering this national wild and scenic river, which delineates the borders of the two counties, promises to be a permitting nightmare. Displaced stones litter the riverbed, clearly visible in the pristine waters. On another day, a hard hat diver assesses the situation below water level. He reports 30 stones on the bottom that would be easy to get. Nevertheless, the project seemed headed for replacing rather than retrieving, coping stone. That replacement is in the capable hands of second generation quarryman Alan Williams, owner of Chester Granite Company. The classic machinery he uses in his quarry speaks volumes of his love for things from the past. This is a man whose roots go deep. Another massive slab of Chester Blue leaves its resting place within the earth in preparation to join its brethren along the west branch of the Westfield River. Positioned on a stone master, the diamond rope saw will slice through the stone in half an hour. Along the Westfield River lies a volunteer built trail. Most transportation corridors begin as Native American trails becoming roads, then turnpikes, finally to be claimed by that all-conquering beast, the railroad. While the bridges stand silently, they symbolize the very essence of motion in the 1840s and for a hundred years thereafter. The beauty of these mortarless monuments is a result of the stonecutter's art and the fine-grained Chester Blue granite found only here. Along the journey, we cross a 65-foot wash on a fiberglass pedestrian bridge, a highlight of the trail. Fishermen revel in this Massachusetts' healthiest river. Visitors find it difficult to comprehend that as monumental as the task of constructing the arches was, the cuts through solid rock taxed labor and the project budget even more. 
Clark with the Western Railroad. I'd be looking for skilled mechanics and laborers. Uh, it's an opportunity you must look at. You pay a dollar forty-five a day for skilled mechanics. You'll earn your money. You'll earn your money, but we'll also pay up to a dollar. Chief Surveyor Major George Washington Whistler knew at once he could not imitate the myriad twists and turns of the river and would have to bridge each change of course that crossed his route. This was the highest and longest railroad ever built. Stone bridges were specified in this remote wilderness for their durability. What I want to do is get a set of photographs that will characterize these bridges in such a way that, uh, you know, if they were to disappear from the, the planet for whatever reason, that uh, people generations from now would be able to have some sense of what these technologies are that, and what made them. Assisting in keeping the environment surrounding the Keystone Arches pristine is the mandate of the Wild and Scenic Advisory Committee. This board tackles issues ranging from historic resources to fish passage. Citizens of the communities along the river serve with entities from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to planning boards, conservation groups, and sportsmen, keeping the watershed healthy for all to enjoy. The first time I came out here, I was inspired by the beautiful surroundings surrounding the bridge. It's kind of like something from a fairy tale that you'd read about. So that made me think of fairies coming out and sneaking out of the forest to dance on the bridge where the trains used to be and dancing around and having a great time and then scampering back into the forest to their little homes in the trees.